You know, I really could have gone without someone requesting this. I really could have gone without it. I really could have gone without... Oh, well, you need to review Lesbian Jesus' is Heavenly Wedding next because it wasn't done on the other channel. Thank you. Thank you for leaving that comment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. I thought this story was done on the old channel because the vagina story was the boobs the one about my boobs that one i did a rating of <laughs> and i assumed that meg read this one but no she didn't and someone caught wind of that yes they did so Today, we are going to be reviewing Lesbian Jesus and Her Heavenly Wedding. God help us all. I got out a bit early today. I uh, did text you to let you know. Oh, uh, sorry about that. Um, I didn't check my phone. I didn't even hear it go off. Uh, I was um, a bit uh, busy uh, reading. Understandable. You never did read that story, did you? No, um, I didn't. Um, how much of, uh, did you hear? Enough. Oh. I'm well aware of the web show, Sue. I've already seen the first couple episodes. Oh, uh, I, I, I am sorry, Meg. I really am. I, I, I was going to tell you. I just didn't know how to. Hey, I'm not mad at you. I just want you to be careful, okay? Oh, I will. I promise. Well, I'll leave you to it. I'll be downstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, that could have gone worse than it did. I don't think she's mad at me. She says that she isn't, but she's a little uh, harder to read these days. Yes, um, so, uh, <laughs> normally I try to film when she's not home. And this is why you check your texts. I have it on vibrate, and I'm surprised it didn't vibrate. Get your minds out of the gutter. Right, let's move forward. Okay, so, my little kitty, she has written some, uh, charming stories. Now, when I was saying that the burping problem story was tame, I meant it. In fact, it's a masterpiece compared to this story. Before I even get into the story itself, the first chapter suffers from block of text syndrome. Like, it's so hard to read, and the dialogue is in the middle of the paragraphs, and the grammar is so atrocious. I mean, the second chapter is much better written. Um... The story was first published in March of uh, 2013. So that was when Meg was still doing the web show. And um, it was last updated in January of 2014. So not too much of a gap between chapters. Oh, I think the old web show stopped in 2014, I think. I know it's been a while. Man, if that's the case, it's been off the... Um, it's been off YouTube for eight years. And this show doesn't count because it's a reboot. But I digress. Um, so anyway, <laughs> let's get on with the bloody review. So the story starts off here, obviously. Meg's in the middle of reading a bad story. It's about, well, Hamo Hamster of all people, of course. And I'm just randomly polishing the face pistol, which I do not have anymore, thank God. I got rid of that shortly after the incident where I lost my temper with Meg, and, um, yes. I didn't want to risk that happening again. And I did go to counseling after a while to, um, curb that issue. So anyway, um, I'm polishing my bloody the phase pistol. And Meg's reading a story about Sweeney Todd and Donkey from Shrek. Right then. The razor 
apparently is banned from the house, but not the face pistol for some reason. And Meg needs to get rid of her stress. So what does Meg do to get rid of her stress? Does she stop reading the story and take a breather? No. She decides to grin at the camera, cover herself in mustard, take the camera, and shove it up her you-know-what. For starters, that would be painful. That would be very painful. I don't see how on earth that would be comfortable. But I digress. Secondly, if the camera's still on, recall. <sighs> okay then, we're gonna get that visual out of my head. So as Meg is doing this, there's an earthquake and I come running upstairs, although I thought I was supposed to be in the same room, but apparently not. And you know, I'm scolding Meg for, you know, shoving things up her, you know what, in the middle of an earthquake. And then lesbian Jesus shows up and she tells us of a prophecy that she and two cousins who look like her need to go to the land of gods. So Meg and I, because we're bored, we decide to go with her. And when we get there, we notice two peculiar things. There are statues of us. The first statue is of Meg. She is in a lake and her knees are above the water along with her head. And um, she has a peculiar expression on her face. You know, the O face. The O face. Do the math. And then when I ask Lesbian and Jesus where my statue is, um, well, my statue, I'm posed like the Statue of Liberty, but I have my finger up my nose because I'm picking my nose. You can see why I didn't want to read this story now. Can you see why? Mm-hmm. So, Lesbian Jesus tells us that we have to get married. All three of us have to get married to each other. So not just me and Meg, but me, Meg, and Lesbian Jesus. And this is because we all look identical. Okay, then, that doesn't make any bloody sense. And at first, Meg and I are like, oh, no, 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 we're not lesbians. And then Lesbian Jesus brings up the cucumber incident, you know, when I literally raped Meg with a cucumber, because apparently that's romantic. And then we decide, okay, yes, we actually do love each other. And the chapter ends with us getting married. And at first, the chapter ends in a way that the story is supposed to be concluded. It is not. The next chapter, oh boy, the next chapter, I will say that the layout for the next chapter is much better. Like, it's much, much better. You can actually read what's going on. But on the other hand, that's a tad unfortunate too, because it was mm -hmm, this chapter. Don't get, oh my God, this chapter. So it opens up in the beautiful land of the gods. Apparently, because we got married, Meg and I are now immortal. And, you know... I decide to go out for a jog. And, you know, I get back. I make breakfast and I go to wake Meg. It's all romantic and sweet. And then we're like, where's lesbian Jesus? Or Jessie. Her nickname is Jessie. How bloody stupid. It then turns out that she was kidnapped. She got kidnapped by this crazy homophobic woman Let's see, what did, what did they say her name was again? Um, Anita Fryant. I don't know if that's a real person or not, but apparently she is some um, homophobe from all of Oklahoma or something of that matter. And she kidnapped lesbian Jesus and she uses her blood to um, make some type of holy water that she's gonna squirt at us with a squirt gun and it's going to make us all straight. So it's not like she's going to, you know, kill people in the LGBT community. She's just going to make them straight, which I mean, it's still wrong, but okay. So what happens next is that Meg and I do the fusion dance and we become 
me, the creator. No, actually, they turn into he woman or she woman or something stupid like that. Do you mind? What? This is my web show. Get out. I'm the creator. I can do whatever I want. Yes, but you're interrupting me and it's awkward. It just looks like I'm talking to myself. It makes me look like I'm crazy. Aren't we all a little crazy, Susan? Can you just get out, please? Fine, fine. Jeez, I just thought I'd be funny. She is gone. And don't ever do that again. Create her or not, that was rude. So anyway, before I was interrupted by Mrs. Mm, we turn into, where is it? Oh, yes, it was She-Woman. We turn into She-Woman and it's like, oh, well... This, this she woman has characteristics of both Meg and Susan. It's like, well, of course she would. Meg and I are identical. We look the same. We are the same. We look the same. We have the same hair. We have the same face. We mostly have the same body. The only difference is, is that, you know, I'm a Brit and she's a Yank. And we're third cousins. But I digress. So uh, we start fighting this crazy homophobic person. Oh, God. Here it comes. And um, we kind of defeat her. And um, so she woman, oh, she woman, oh God, she woman. So what she does next? Oh. The homophobe is on the ground. She woman just takes off the pants. And yeah, you know, apparently because of Meg's vagina of wonders and because me and her merged, the womanhood is now a black hole. It's a black hole. It's a black hole. And um, Anita gets sucked inside of it. She gets sucked inside of the black hole vagina. And so we find lesbian Jesus and we free her. And then we live happily ever after. Why did you request this story? This was so... Dead. Oh my god! What were you thinking? I could have gone without reading this! I would rather read Susan's Beppy Problem 500 times than read this. <laughs> I know it's not meant to be taken seriously, but still. I mean, where do I begin? The concept of it... There's a prophecy... That we have to marry lesbian Jesus because we look alike and we don't. I guess we do look like lesbian Jesus, but because lesbian Jesus is played by the same person that we are, it makes sense that we would look like her. But it wasn't established in the other show that she looked like us. So, there! And then secondly, secondly... The prophecy just makes no sense. We have to marry her because we all look alike. Why? I don't get it. And then the second chapter with the homophobe person. It's like, why? And then we merge and become she-woman. Why? And then the statues. Why am I the Statue of Liberty picking my nose? Did I ever once pick my nose on the web show? No, I didn't. First burping and now picking my nose. Are you for real? Why? And then the black hole vagina. Oh, and then sh make shoving the camera up a vagina. Ouch! No! Oh, that'd be like I'm filming this on a webcam, on a laptop. I don't think that would fit. I'm not going to say it won't because Meg made that mistake in her premiere episode of her web show saying that four fingers would not fit up there. And um, they do. Not that I've tried personally, but okay, enough of that. So, with that said, would I recommend this story? No. The only thing I would recommend it for is to be hurled off into the sun so it would burn and never exist because I never, ever, ever want to read this garbage again. Ah, my God. Ah, uh, ah. Uh.
Ah, I am so glad that I do not read these stories out loud, like in the old web show, because I don't think I could. It was painful just reading it silently. Ugh. And when you're reading it out loud, you notice way more things. <laughs> Sorry if this review is not as put together as my other two reviews, but this story, I, I just was fresh from reading this story, and then Meg coming in all unannounced, which threw me off. I guess I now know how she felt when I used to do that to her all the time. At least she was calm about it, until she watches this episode. Meg, I'm very sorry. I, I, It was not my idea. I should probably not be saying that, because if she can hear... Okay. Well, that concludes today's video. <laughs> I really hope that Milo Kitty doesn't write any more stories, but she probably will. Oh, God help us all. Well, I will see you all next week if you liked this video. Please be sure to like, leave a comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Until then, cheerio.